pick this shirt up for eight, maybe seven bucks at a Goodwill APC. It's a French brand, if you couldn't guess. 47 bucks. It's a solid brand. The sell-through is so-so, but I've picked up everything that I've found. This is one of the brands that I used to source. I think I did it once or twice off of Poshmark to flip on Poshmark. My cool next door neighbors gave me a couple big boxes of free clothing. And this was in there. It's an Old Navy pixie pant. Uh, I price up a little bit on Poshmark for a couple of reasons. I price higher than I do on eBay. And this sold for a full asking price of 17 bucks almost right away, which was kind of a shocker. I think I got lucky a little bit. I would not pick these up for more than like one or two dollars. This would have been, I think a dollar item. Levi's 513s. Uh, I have a breakdown in the menswear manifesto of every cut of men's jeans by sell-through. There's a link to that in the description if you're curious. It's free. Pay what you want. The second pair of RRL Ralph Ralph Lauren jeans sold for 80 bucks. This is the one that was in worse condition. It had a lot more wear than the other one, which sold pretty much right away, as you can see on the pocket here. So it took slightly longer to sell, but still flipped for 80 bucks. This is one of my all-time favorite tags to find. This double RL right here. And sales were really terrible for a while and they've picked back up. They're still not great, but they're definitely better. I got this at the bins and it wound up in the bins because it had a stain on the front there and it had a broken button on the cuff. Still flipped for 35 bucks. The brand is Missoni, which you can't see all that well. There it is, M-I-S-S-O-N-I. -S -S it's an Italian designer brand, kind of like uh, Ferragamo in that sort of a genre and I don't find it all that much. I don't think it's like a hot seller, but it can be worth better money. And this was an interesting kind of a knit herringbone. I don't exactly remember where I got this. It was definitely a retail thrift store and I probably paid at least 10 bucks for it. 10 bucks, very well worth it. That's Ralph Lauren Black Label, which is one of the best Ralph Laurens to find. I would say Black Label and Purple Label are the two most expensive. Purple Label probably being a little superior to Black Label and Ralph Ralph Lauren. Those are the three that are like the big, big marquee sub lines of Ralph Lauren. It's 100% linen. I think it's of contemporary manufacture too. 150 bucks, it sold really quick. So just across the board, all check boxes checked off. Great brand right time of year, right fabric, at a reasonably decent price. Most of my suits and suit jackets, I don't price up above a hundred bucks. That's kind of the sweet spot for me. That's where I like the price. Something really special like this, I do price up. A testament to how strong this brand is, Viore. I got it at the bins. It was covered in purple paint splatters, still flipped for 18 bucks plus shipping on Poshmark. Someone said in my Vero video that Viore is starting to rattle at Sabre a little bit. I have not confirmed or denied that, but it's something to be aware of. I really hope that that's not the case because this is probably the easiest menswear brand that you can flip. This is an untuck it shirt. It's a dress shirt. It has some smudging on the cuff here and a stain on the back, still flip for 22 bucks. Untuck it is one of the only dress shirt brands that I really love to find to flip. Dress shirts, I tend to skew away from a little bit unless, you know, it's like a really desirable brand, like something like Turnbull and Asser um, or Brioni. Untuck it of the contemporary dress shirts is my favorite. And dress shirts are tough because they get worn into the ground. People uh, wear them way past the point where they should get a new shirt. So they'll typically have stains and like really gnarly armpits and a lot of yellowing on the collar and fraying on the cuffs. It's pretty rare to find something in a dress shirt that's really in good condition, as this was not, but I got it for dirt cheap, flipped it for 22 bucks. This is a case of just going with my eye. The brand is in Dudeski We Trust, which is some forgotten boutique little one-off brand that never got traction, but it was made with Supima cotton. That's a slightly higher quality cotton than the standard cotton that most t-shirts are made with or shirts. Great Ben's brand. I've hyped this brand up a lot on this channel. It's Fox Racing. And uh, this is like a motocross tank top, flipped for 15 bucks. I don't spend up for it unless it's something really cool, but I pick it up every time I find it at the bins and all of it will uh, typically sell. This is another brand that I will pick up in dress shirts. I'll pick up anything that I find that's Isaiah Napoli. 
the logo is this red coral thing there. So if you ever see that anywhere on a piece of clothing, that means it's probably Napoli and some very high quality stuff. The suits and the jackets can be worth hundreds of dollars. It's one of the higher end suit brands or formal clothing, men's brands that I have found more than one time. This is a pair of women's jeans that I got at the bins and it had some distending around the crotch, which happens with denim fabric or really any kind of fabric that has spandex or elastane content. If it's stretch fabric, it can get stretched beyond its capacity to snap back and you get this kind of ruffled texture on the fabric and you really have to be on the lookout for this on women's denim especially around the crotch and it is not prohibitive of a sale clearly because this still sold for 31 bucks but it does diminish the value of the jeans quite a bit mother is an excellent brand it's one of the few buy on site women's brands that i know about their denim is just kind of universally worth money. This is a factory sealed DVD box set of Sports Night, a TV show that I'm not familiar with. $78. Full asking price, which is pretty remarkable. And this goes out media mail, so shipping was really cheap. I just put it in two nested bubble mailers. This is Ex Officio, which is a pretty low-end brand. This was in my outdoor clothing brands tier list video, and it was lower down, probably around D tier. Don't remember exactly where I put it, but it's not great. Found it at the bins. It, this is what's called a waffle knit shirt, that kind of texture. Waffle knit and thermal are synonymous to my mind, uh, as, at least in these kinds of uh, t-shirts. Could also have used base layer well i did use base layer because i'm such a genius another phenomenal bins piece to pick up that gets picked over quite a lot or you know picked past i should say the bins i have found there's a lot of gold sitting at the very bottom of the bin underneath all of the larger clothing pieces almost like um like a box of cereal how the bottom layer will just be dust cereal dust there's a lot of clothing dust at the bottom, bottoms of those bins, and uh, the dust can be pretty delicious. So I found a ton of little Lululemon sports bras and little bottoms, little, you know, hot pants. And this is an example. This is a sports bra. Sports bras are great to flip because uh, they don't have the wiring in them like bra bras have, bra, bra bras, and uh, they weigh next to nothing and they have pretty decent demand especially around now when people are exercising outdoors and nike in general is just a solid bins brand i picked this up for 15 flipped for 100 bucks it flipped faster than i thought it would this is another kind of perfect item polo ralph lauren 100 percent linen that's the current tag i could have priced this up a little more and still flipped it but i was happy with it I did finally sell this. This was in an older video. This is another example of performance merino wool, outdoor merino wool that's covered in holes, still flipping for good money. Did get this at the bins, had tons of holes on it, and it was in a, you know, not that relatively a desirable color for men's clothing, pink. With some provisos, pink is, is a lower sell through color for men, um, still flip for 18 bucks. And I'm not shocked that it took a little longer to flip, but I'm also not shocked that it still flipped for that amount of money, despite the fact that it was covered in holes. Lucky Brand is another unconditional, relatively unconditional, depending upon the actual condition. So I guess technically, literally conditional pickup when it's cheap, like when it's two bucks or less, I will pick up Lucky Brand in men's. I have heard that women's Lucky Brand sells more slowly than men's, but for men's, one of the finest mall brands available to us, Venice Burnout in Lucky is my favorite subline of Lucky to sell. It sells itself. This flipped right away. I got it for a buck or two at a Goodwill. It was factory sealed-ish. Barry Manilow, just, you know, high sell through. Phenomenal bins pickup, which is where I got this. I would have probably paid like 10, maybe even 15 bucks for this. It's a John Varvatos military themed cargo jacket, 
I couldn't find the style code. I couldn't find the proper title for it. So I just used kind of generic keywords and it flipped really quickly for 68. I had it listed at 99. I just took that offer. This is another gift from my neighbor. It was new. It had the, uh, the loop on the tag. It didn't have the actual tags or the loop on the label. You can see there. So that's new and it's sold for 26.50. I don't particularly like Flipping Express. It's definitely a lower end mall brand, very fast fashion. It is maybe like one tier above H&M. It's like 0.5 to one tier up. But when I find it new with tags, I will still flip it. If I found it at the bins new with tags, I'd probably pick it up. These were just in a haul video and they sold pretty much right away. It turned out these were the first three books in the series. It's like a 20 plus book series. So I think that expedited the sale quite a bit. The first three in the Horus Heresy books. Not all Warhammer books are created equal. Some of them are worth over 50 bucks. Some of them are worth nothing. They're all worth looking up and you find them if you're looking for them. I find them quite frequently. I would say of all the like genre tie-in novels, Warhammer has been the most consistent. Maybe with uh, Magic the Gathering right behind it. Another great example of Lucky Brand at the Bins. These are Corduroys flipped for 20 bucks, had basically nothing into them. Yes, 20 with free shipping is on the low end, but I still pocketed a healthy chunk of profit. I'm warming up slowly to selling dress pants and chinos and slacks. It's a section that I tend to avoid because it's such a pain in the ass to sort through with the way that they're hung. And because they're relatively low yield, like you don't find stuff all that much, but because it's not on people's radar. I think it's less picked over than other sections. And I've definitely found that to be the case with suits as well. And it's Vitali Barbera's Canonico, which I would rank second in my kind of mental tier list of wool fabrics right below Laura Piana. It's not in nearly as high of demand as Piana, but it does definitely add value. Oakley, Kind of like Fox Racing actually, is just a really solid bread and butter brand. You can get it for cheap. It's not on a lot of people's radar, certainly in terms of pricing at the thrift stores. And it's not on that many people's radar as a resale brand, I don't think. People know about it, but the demand is pretty healthy. Another one I got for a buck would not have touched it for more than say $5. Even at that price, I probably would have skipped it, but because it was just such a softball underhand pitch, right over the plate. I picked it up, flipped it for 36 bucks, and I picked it up because it was of recent manufacture, and it's Tommy Hilfiger, which is generally trash. But it had this thick felt fabric. It was this cotton blend. It felt kind of wooly. It was like really thick and soft. I've also grown fond of selling dockers that's new with tags. Every time I seem to list it, it seems to flip almost immediately. And same is true of Hagar. New with tags, they seem to have a really strong resale market, which is pretty exciting because you do find this stuff every once in a while. I've said a few times in a few videos that I don't really source shoes anymore unless I find something that's really remarkably valuable. And this was one of those days. This is a while back. It took me forever to, to get around to listing them just because I always drag my feet. Sorry, that was an unintentional joke. Uh, when it comes to Listing shoes, it's just such a tedious process to me. I don't enjoy it at all, at all. but I do enjoy flipping $10 shoes for 200 bucks. The brand is Belvedere and that's real crocodile skin. That's what's called a hornback shoe, which I learned through the process of researching these shoes. Hornback meaning that ridge of spines running down the middle that weren't in all that great of shape some of them are turned over, bent over, super, super rare. Genuine alligator skin, genuine crocodile, um, ostrich leather, snake skin, these exotic leathers and skins typically will add value to a piece. Something like this, I think probably regardless of brand is worth picking up if you can get it for a reasonable price. Very, very, very not common. And there's this old adage in reselling that ugly sells and ugly does sell. That is a really good rule of thumb in an arena where there are very few rules of thumb that actually consistently apply. 
ugly, tacky, nasty, gaudy, brightly colored, color blocked, weird patterns, weird skin, stuff that you personally may not be caught dead wearing is the stuff that a lot of the time will be able to fetch a higher price because people want it. It's a more niche market. People are willing to pay up for it because it's less common. Don't remember where I got this. It's Foot Joy, which is a great middle of the road bread and butter brand. The golf shorts, golf pants, polo shirts, jackets are all gonna sell well various times of the year. I pick it up whenever I find it for cheap. It's never really let me down. Sometimes it does take a little longer to sell, but uh, a brand that I'm happy with, and I, I hope I'm not too redundant in saying this, I've said this a few times, but when you find polo shirts that are branded with golf courses or golf tournaments, that is not prohibitive of a sale. Company logos much more so, but golf stuff, does not really diminish the value all that much. In fact, for some instances, it will actually add value to the piece because specific golf courses or golf events will have their own demand. They will carry over into the piece. I don't know if that was the case with the bridges and that's the, uh, the size right there. It's not a copyright or trademark logo, that's the size. Skipping over a bunch of the lower end flips that aren't that remarkable. This is a new one for me. It's a child's spring suit, wetsuit. I should have said spring suit in the title, but I didn't. Spring suits are the ones that have uh, short sleeves and legs. Pretty sure I'm not a surfer, that could be wrong. But it was, it weighed like 10 ounces or something. It was only like this big. Got it at the bins, so this shipped out first class. Wetsuits are an interesting niche that I should know more about because I find them a lot living in San Diego. And some of them I know obviously are worth money. Um, something that would be probably worth flipping locally more than maybe shoving into a large flat rate box and shipping out. Um, wetsuits I'm a little bit trepidatious of because they're made of neoprene and neoprene is tough to find uh, holes, puncture holes and tears in because it's so dense and springy. I know that from fishing and wearing neoprene waders when I was a kid. So I kind of steered away from them, but there definitely is money there and it's something I should know more about. But something like this is just super easy. This was a fun one, it's Ann Taylor. And Ann Taylor Loft is worth nothing. And I thought Ann Taylor generally was not that good of a brand, but I mentioned, I said that in a video and I had a bunch of people rush into the comments to correct me. Apparently mainline Ann Taylor is worth more than Ann Taylor Loft, and some of it can be worth some pretty good money. Ann Taylor Factory, I also find, I would assume that's on the lower end of value. Please correct me if that's wrong. But this is just mainline Ann Taylor, and it's wool cashmere blend, and it's this weird, I don't even know how to describe it, like ruched hem or ruffled hem, ruffle hem, pullover crew neck, sweater, 23 bucks, pretty good flip. I think these flipped overnight found these for four or five bucks at a Salvation Army. Oh, okay. We've run out of space. Hope you learned something. Cheers. Thank you for watching. See you next time.